Chronicle was originally one book along with Ezra, but then later separated. Mm -hmm. uh, he also uh, allowed us to, to be informed of the fact that Ezra originally wasn't supposed to be the, wasn't uh, annotated as the author of First and Second Chronicles, uh, but of the book of Ezra, but we learn to learn historically that Ezra was given the author, uh, authorship of it by a book called the Talmud. And the Talmud was a, a Jewish book uh, that had the uh, all the Jewish uh, religious laws in it, and it alluded to Ezra as being the author of uh, First Chronicle and Second Chronicle. Thank you. So, so it was uh, the Talmud was a, a central text of the rabbinic Judaic, Judaic uh, laws, and so, and that brings us to, and I believe that's that brings us up to to par on everything that Pastor covered the last time we were together. So let's jump right in. Oh, one other thing. In addition to that, First and Second Chronicle, another reason why they gave Ezra the authorship of First and Second Chronicles is because of the fact that they have similar styles of writing. Mm -hmm. Also, the vocabulary was similar and the contents. And we know that Ezra was also a priest and he was a scribe. So those are the, the foundational reasons why they give Ezra the authorship of First and Second Chronicles. Mm -hmm. And when you read First and Second Chronicles, the, the last verses of Chronicles, I mean the first few verses of, the last verses of Ezra, I mean of Chronicles, start off the first verses in Ezra, right. in the book of Ezra. Mm -hmm. Come on. Mm -hmm. What is a scribe? A scribe is, during those days, he was a, a writer. The same thing what we would uh, allude to as a, uh, a author. Okay. So a scribe wrote the laws okay. uh, for the people. Okay. So because of that, that's a little history So the, to expound upon what Pastor had said. But he had said all of that because he read a, a, a large amount of that history when he began. So I just wanted to bring us back up to speed so we'll remember what we discussed last week. Amen. Okay. And I'm going to begin in chapter 5. It is, uh, you know, we were talking about genealogies. And here we're going to talk about three families within that genealogy in chapter 5. I'll read verse 1 through 7. And if someone else would like to help out tonight, uh, I welcome that. And then we'll discuss it as we go along. Now the sons of Reuben, beginning at verse 1, the firstborn of Israel, he was indeed the firstborn, but because he defiled his father's bed, his birthright was given to the sons of Joseph, the son of Israel, so that the genealogy is not listed according to the birthright. Yet Judah prevailed over his brothers, and from him came a ruler, although the birthright was Joseph's. The sons of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, were Hanak, Palu, Hezron, and Carmi. Verse 4. The sons of Joel were Shimeak, his son, Gog, his son, Simei, his son, Micah, his son, Rehar, his son, Baal, his son, and I don't know if you could remember, but Baal is the same name of the God that they were worshiping. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. Yes. Verse 6, and Barak, his son, whom Tigga king of Assyria, carried into captivity. He was leader of the Reubenites. And his brother, by their families, when the genealogy of their gener generations was registered, the chief Jeril and Zechariah. So, as you can see here, it's naming all these firstborns and it's talking about uh, the genealogy of Reuben. So as we go on and as we go through Chronicles, we'll see where a lot of these names will appear. And so... 
it, would someone like to read verse 7 to uh, 15? I just want to talk about what Reuben did, his uh, losing his, uh, his name in the genealogical, genealogical uh, part of the tribes is because he slept with his, uh, his father's uh, concubine. Yes, sir. And so that shows how serious God is, mm -hmm. how serious he is about uh, adultery and, and uh, promiscuous, being promiscuous, and how God was serious about that even to the point that he had to use, take him out of that, uh, that area as far as the, the tribes of Israel. Yes, sir. Take his name out. Uh, you are absolutely right. And this is the same concubine that, uh, that um, uh, was, uh, that his father slept with because his mother told him to sleep with her. Uh, and you'll find that in, uh, it, let's go there so you, we can read that. We, let's go to Genesis 35. Genesis 35, verse 21 and 22 is where we're going to find that. What verse? Genesis uh, 25, verse 21 and 22. I mean, Genesis 35, verse 21 and 22. And it's important that you said that, Pastor, because... Uh, <clears throat> That's something he was not supposed to do because that was also in the Levitical law. Mm -hmm. And it comes under the, the covering or the heading of covetousness. In the Levitical law, it says that you, wouldn't, you shouldn't cover your neighbor's wife, yeah. cover your father's wife. Mm -hmm. In other words, sleep with them. Yeah. You shouldn't cover your neighbor's daughter. You couldn't, you couldn't cover anything that your neighbors had or anything that didn't belong to you. And so he broke this law that was given or mandated and he violated his father's, uh, uh, he violated his father because he uncovered that which shouldn't have been covered, which was his wife's, his father's wife. So we're at Genesis 35, verse 21 and 22. Then Jacob traveled, traveled on and camped beyond Medeir Elder. While he was living there, Reuben had intercourse with Bahaz, his father's countryman, and Jacob soon heard about it. These are the names of the twelve sons of Jacob. That's 21 and 22. Okay. So as you can see, Reuben did something that he wasn't supposed to do. And as Pastor said, it violated the law and God was angry over that. So he took away the birthright. Yeah. Now the other person, if you can remember, that lost his birthright yeah. was uh, in the book of Genesis, which was Esau. Esau lost his birthright. And I want to point this out that Esau lost his birthright because what he was more after was something that had to deal with the flesh. Mm -hmm. If you remember, he was hungry and he wanted some stew yeah. because he was hungry. So he gave up his birthright to satisfy his flesh. Mm -hmm. And this is what Reuben did also. Rather than respect his father, concubine, which was also his wife, he slept with his father's wife and that was a violation. Yeah. And so God skipped over him and he didn't get his birthright. Reuben didn't get his birthright. Right. So let's go back to First Chronicles. Mm -hmm. Anybody have anything? Come on, sister. They were both tricked as well. Uh, because when he slept with his wife, I mean his father's concubine, didn't she disguise herself as a prostitute? And he didn't know that he was sleeping with her, or am I getting mixed up? I think uh, what you're it's it's in another yeah. book. It's oh, in okay. another it's in another book. Uh, that was um, I don't want to uh, guess on it, but it'll come to me. Uh, and that Joseph, uh, not Joseph. Uh, no. Uh, what is it? Uh, uh, you have to look at that one. Yeah, Sorry. yeah. Sorry. I remember yeah. that story, but I can't remember who it was. Okay, a different person. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, no, it's okay. Uh, but yes, the person you're talking about, she did disguise herself so that. Because uh, uh, actually, he was the father in law. Yeah. Yes, yes. He was the yes. father in law. Yes. yes. 
And so she disguised herself so that she can become pregnant by him and then she could have an inheritance. Yeah. And that's what that story was about. So, uh, moving right along, uh, did anyone want to read uh, verse uh, 8 through 17 or 8 through 16? And we could discuss some more. If not, I'll continue on. Okay. Continuing on. Verse 8. And Bella, the son of Azaz, the son of Shema, the son of Joel, who dwelt in Aaron, as far as Nebo and Baal Maon, eastward they settled as far as the entrance of the wilderness, this side of the river Euphrates, because their cattle had multiplied in the land of Gilead. Gilead. Now in the days of Saul, they made war with the Hagrites, who fell by their hand, and they dwelt in the tents throughout the entire area east of Gilead, Gilead. Verse 11. This is the family of Gad. And the children of Gad dwelt next to them in the land of Bashan as far as Salkal. Joel was the chief Sapham the next and Janai and Saphat in Bashan and their brethren of their father's house Michael Meshulam, Sheba, Joari, Jachan, Zai, and Eber, seven in all. Verse 14. These were the children of Abihail, the son of Ura, Hura, the son of Jorah, the son of Gilead, the son of Michael, the son of Jehishai, the son of Jadun, the son of Buzz, Ahai, the son of Abdiel, the son of Guni, was chief of their father's house. Verse 16. And the Gidites dwelt in Gid, in the Bashan, in its villages, and in its villages, and in all the common lands of Sharon within their borders. So here we see that the, we have named uh, two tribes that were there in that area. And we're going to discover later on that because they were in that area, there was a, uh, something to their advantage because they were there. Verse 17. All these were registered by genealogies in the days of Jotham, king of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, king of Israel. The sons of Reuben, the Gadites, and half of the tribe of Manasseh had 44,760 valiant men, men able to bear shield and sword, to shoot with the bow, and skillful in war who went to war. Notice now, we're talking about Reuben, we're talking about Gad, we're talking about the Gadites, uh, and now we're going to see something real important and I want us to talk about verse 19 and 20. They made war with the Hagrites, Jitur, Naphish, and Nobab. And they were helped against them and the Hagrites were delivered into their hands and all who were with them for the, they cried out unto God in battle he heeded their prayer because they put their trust in him. And I want to stop right there. Notice now they were there and they went to war. They went to war, if you notice, and I want to point out something to you. Look at verse 19. It says they made war with the Hagrites, Jetul, Nepish, and Nodad. Did you know that, and you may have not known, but these were the sons of Ishmael. Mm -hmm. These were the descendants, the sons of Ishmael, and they were fighting with Ishmael's children. And there's still a war going on over in the Middle East with the children of Ishmael to this day. Mm -hmm. But notice now, 
before they went into the battle, it doesn't say before, it says while they were in battle, they cried out unto the Lord. And which is what we should do before we get into battle or before we start dealing with something. We need to cry out unto the Lord because the scripture says that our help comes from the Lord. Amen. So we should always cry out to God. That way when our help arrives, we'll know who it is that's helping us through our battles. Amen. Amen. Anybody have anything? Come on, Pastor. Yes. That's, doesn't matter how many it is. You see how many uh, groups they're fighting against? That's quite a few. And sometimes we, uh, seems like we're uh, overwhelmed or outnumbered. But when we have God, we have the majority. So it doesn't matter how many they have, uh, we have the majority. And I also wanted to, you talked about uh, the Ishmaelites. Ishmaelites, uh, we have those sons that were uh, of Isaac, those were of Ishmael, which were the children of Abraham. So Isaac's uh, sons, of course, are the, the children of the Hebrews. Mm -hmm. And then you have the Ishmaelites, and now the Palestinians, who are always constantly fighting with the Jews or over the Israelites, it's been happening. So that's the children of the Palestinians also. So I also want to clear up with what um, Sister Carolyn was talking about was Judah. Judah was the other son, and Judah was an older man, but he slept with his daughter-in-law because she didn't have any children. Her, her name yeah. is Tamar. Yeah, yeah, now yeah. Judah, who's, who's, who came from the lineage of Judah? Jesus. Jesus, Jesus yeah. is from the tribe of Judah, so he did have, there was some issues in the line. You know, but God is still faithful. God yeah. still, and he, providential, God says that, through the line of Judah, no matter what all happened with all those genealogical problems of those people back then, it still was a line of Jesus. It still came through, and Jesus still came, no matter who was doing. Because there were a few other people in in his line that were kind of messed up too. Yeah, yeah. Amen. So that was Judah and Tamar. Uh, and, uh, and it talks about Rahab, who mm -hmm. was a prostitute, prostitute. Yes, came through the lineage of Judah, Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so. It's, so it's, it's really important that we know the, the history, not so much the, the Jewish genealogy, but the fact, like Pastor said, that there's history in who comes through the genealogies, you know? So, uh, but you were talking just now, Pastor, and I wanted to uh, throw a scripture out there. Uh, you said it doesn't matter how many enemies, uh, the scripture says, if God be for you, who can be against you? So I did, when you were talking, that that's the, the passage that came up uh, to me. Anybody else have anything? Well, uh, like I said, this was a short passage. I mean, a short uh, thing. But notice now that out of these three tri tribes, they were living in conjunction with one another. And that's how they were able to... Uh, defeat their enemies because they work together to battle them, battle them. Instead of being individually, they fought together. They were united. So that just goes to show you that when you're united, you'll get victory. Come on, you, you said what I was saying. We if we all work in unity together. We can't go wrong. Yes, sir. Like uh, I think uh, Mr. Tyrone said, we win, we win. Yes, sir. We appreciate it. We, we, a lot of people don't want to, because uh, we are, uh, I used to put that, because we have our own will, and sometimes we have our own thing, and we, uh, like the pastor was saying during the, the uh, church confession, if you confess it and, don't, and not uh, in unity with it, why well, say it? Mm -hmm. So that's why we must be on the same accord Amen. if we want to win mm -hmm. as a group. Mm -hmm. And Amen. some, go ahead. And something else we have to notice now, there was, it says that there were two and a half tribes over there on that side of the, the water. Mm -hmm. And those two and a half tribes, they had to unite in order to get the victory. Mm -hmm. Because if they didn't unite, they wouldn't have got the victory. Mm -hmm. But what the part I like was, in which I pointed out in verse 19 and 20, that they cried out unto the Lord. Yes. I Amen. wonder if they would have gotten the victory if they had not cried yeah. out to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, do it. Can anybody tell me who the the Gadites were? We read that in verse sixteen. It says the Gadites dwelt in Gilead. 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 Children of Gad. The children of Gad. Just like you, the Bible, uh, for some reason, God, God puts these 
ITESs to the end of those names so that you know who the people, the tribe words like, uh, for, for instance, uh, the Reubenites. Mm -hmm. You know, so that was the name of those people who came from Reuben. Levites. The Levites, mm -hmm. yeah. So it just goes on and on. But anyway, moving right along here, we're at verse 21. Then they took away their livestock, 50,000 of their cameras, camels, 250,000 of their sheep, and 2,000 of their donkeys, also 100,000 of their men. For many fell dead because the war was God's mm. and they dwelt in their place until the captivity. Now it says the war was God's. Where else in the Bible where we have we read that? For the battle is the Lord. Mm. Yes. yes. Stand still for the battle is not yours but the, the battle is of the Lord. Yes. That's in Chronicles. Amen. Amen. And so, so here we, hit, and we hear this and we see this and so now, this scripture, this passage right here is pointing out who this war was for. Mm -hmm. It was God's battle, and that's why he allowed them to win this, this battle. So, we're at verse 23, the family of Manasseh. So the children of the half-tribe of Manasseh dwelt in the land. Their numbers increased from Bashan to Baal, Hermon. That is to Sinar or Mount Hermon. We remember Mount Hermon, don't we? Mount Hermon is where Moses was. Remember the mount? Mm -hmm. When Moses went up yes. to get the tablets? Yeah. This is the same area, Mount Hermon. So we're at uh, verse 24. These were the heads of their father's houses, Ephar, Ishai, Eli, Azrael, Jeremiah, Hodavah, and Jadil. They were mighty men of valor, famous men, and heads of their father's houses. Let me stop right there. Notice what it says that they were. They were mighty men of valor. Can we remember someone else that was called a mighty man of valor? Gideon. Gideon, you're absolutely yeah. right. The Lord called him a mighty man of valor. And when God called him a mighty man of valor, he refused to accept the title. Mm -hmm. Remember that? Mm -hmm. He says, I'm the, I'm the smallest of my clan. I'm the weakest. Yeah. So he started making excuses like Moses when God called Moses. But when God calls you God is calling you to do a mighty thing, a mighty work for him. Yeah. So we are, us as men, we are mighty men of valor, a mighty women of valor, because God has put something on us, which is called, an, it is an anointing that God puts on us that causes us to, to do mighty things or great things for his behalf, Amen. because of the anointing that he puts upon us. So when he called Gideon, there was an anointing that he put upon Gideon so that Gideon won the, won the battle. So anytime someone in the scriptures is going to battle, God puts an anointing on them Amen, yeah. so that they can defeat their enemies. Amen. And we have that same anointing, yes. but we have a greater anointing yes. because of who's on the inside of us. Yes. Amen. And so... Because of that anointing, that's why we are able to accomplish so many things in our lives. Because of the anointing that's on us. Amen. And who's on the inside of us, which is the anointing. That's uh, like those men, um, Gideon, and here, right here, uh, I, I can relate to it, and I believe some of us can as well. When he called uh, mighty men of valor, is that when... Uh, God asks us to do something or we, we at times looking at ourselves through our eyes and saying that we can't do that because we're looking at our flesh and our uh, strength so we don't accept it first when uh, he tells us we can do it because we're looking at us in the natural and uh, it's because not until we change our eyes and put our focus on God and believe that we can do it because of him that's on the inside of us and when we get there then we can do it but at first we're looking at not me I can't do that 
So just like they did that then, we at times do that as well. Mm -hmm. And I know that I, I have. Oh, yeah. Thank you. I want to add to Sister Jane. What we do, we look for God to do it. God has asked us to do it, so we look for God to do it. Mm -hmm. yeah, instead of he, he doing what he tells us to do. And that's what, uh, like you said, I can't do that. And God said, you can. Mm -hmm. So we, we always look for God to do this and do that. And God said, I have anointed you to do it. You're absolutely right. And one of the one of my favorite passages is in the book of John. When uh, Jesus dies on the cross, he looks up and he says, it is finished. Mm -hmm. Everything, and sometimes as believers, what we tend to not realize is when Jesus said, it is finished, there is nothing else that he's going to do for us. Mm -hmm. He's already done it all. Mm -hmm. He said, when I go away, I'm going to not leave you helpless. I'm going to send you a helper. Yeah. Right. So like you said, Minister uh, Jackie, the help is on the inside, but the task God is calling us to, we think is so insurmountable that we can't accomplish it. Yeah. But we have what we need, and that's why the scripture says that we're more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. Yes. Yes. So if we'll take our eyes off the situation and put our eyes on where the help is coming from, go ahead, sister. With God, all things are possible. Yes, yes. All right. yes. Amen. you're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. and, and so I think... What we're saying is, is because what we're called to do, it's just like starting anything that God calls you to. If you've never done it before, it's, it's the same way as a uh, pastor in sports. If a, a young man has never played a position, the first thing he'll say is, well, I've never played that position before. Yes. I want to give you an example. As you asked about uh, who was called a mighty man about it. Gideon. Yes. Because he said, God had already won the battle for him. He just needed him to go forward. Mm -hmm. And that's why God already won our battles or either open the doors for us, what he's called us to do. All we need to do is go ahead and do what he asked us to do. Go forward and go through that door. Go the battle. Some, someone once said, anybody else? Yeah, yeah someone to in the record, this brother and sister said, when we are called by God, a lot of times we don't want to get out of our comfort zone. Oh, we don't right. want to be persecuted. Yeah, that's all right. We don't that's want right. to be isolated. We don't want to be single out. We yes. don't want to go through the, you know, the motion of, you know, people pulling back from you or, yeah. or, or be, people saying negative stuff or finding fault or whatever. But like everybody has said, when God called us to do something, the way has already been paved. Yeah. Yes. All we have to do is just keep our eyes and focus on God and just know that it's already done and, and remember that all things are possible. Yeah. And if he say, I'll be for you, I'll be for you, who can be against you? Yes. And we have to meditate on that. Yes. yes. We, have, we, have to, we have to remember that because we are people of the word. And as people of the word, we have to depend and rely on what God has said about us and not what everyone else is saying about yeah. us. And so since you brought up Gideon, the battle, just like this one, Gideon defeated a, an entire army. Yeah. He was outnumbered, and God only let, let him take 300 to the battle. Right. Mm -hmm. So he was outnumbered, but yet he was able to accomplish this. Mm -hmm. But you see, he was looking at his statue, what God was calling him to, but he forgot that God is his source. Yeah. And that God was his provider. And as he went along, he kept asking for proof. Yeah. And we do that same thing. We keep asking for proof. Yeah. Instead of just trusting God. Amen. Show me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it, it, if it's you, Lord, uh, this fleece, uh, let it be wet and the ground around it be dry. dry. Yeah. Tomorrow, let the ground be dry and the fleece be wet. You know? <laughs> We want to keep asking God to prove it in, yeah. instead of just doing it, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, in Samuel, I believe it is, it says obedience is greater or better than sacrifice. Yes. Sometimes what we do is we want to sacrifice the obedience. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. All right. Good about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we want to sacrifice the obedience. God said, this is what I'm calling you to. And we'll say, oh, okay, and then we walk away from what he's calling you to. Mm -hmm. Rather than just do it and let God take care of the consequences. Yeah. Yeah. 
we focus on the consequences opposed to what God is calling us to. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm looking at, it just came up to me as to blind faith. Mm -hmm. As to we have to have that blind faith and trust God that he's going to do what he said he's going to do for us and through us. Mm -hmm. Amen. I, I would agree with that. And I, 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 this is not to negate what you're saying. Uh, once, one time that when that statement first came out about blind faith, it has been preached that there is no such thing as blind faith. But they forget to read when God called Abram, that's what Abraham was walking on. A walking in was blind faith because he had to go to a place he's never been. He had to leave family and relatives. And then he had to rely on God to take care of him. It says he got up and he went to where he had never even been. That you, Look, that's what God is calling us to do, to go somewhere we've never gone, mm -hmm. do something we've never done, and then just to trust him that he's going to take us to where we, we have to go. Amen. 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 And so that's our battle. Every single day, like you said, that is our battle. Trust in God. It's a battle because you have to make that decision. Yeah. Am I going to do what he's calling me to do? And am I willing to sacrifice? I, I don't know if I want to leave my kinfolk because they don't believe what I believe. Mm -hmm. You know, they might not talk to me no more because I'm, I'm just sold out for Jesus. Mm -hmm. What you mean you don't drink no more? You used to drink with us. Mm. <laughs> you used to hang out with us. Now you, you too... You're too big for us. Now you can't hang out with us. Those are the sacrifices we have to make mm -hmm. in order to follow the Lord. That's right. Amen. And then, like I said, are you willing to sacrifice? That's the biggest thing. Being willing to sacrifice whatever it takes yeah. to do what God is calling you to do. So, moving right along, we are at verse... 25 and they were were there anyone else having anything to say anybody else verse 25 and they were unfaithful to God of their fathers and they played the harlot after the gods of the people of the land whom God had destroyed before them hmm. you just cry out to God for help yes he gives you a battle and then you go back to doing what you were doing before. And the Bible tells us in the last days that there will be a great falling away. Mm -hmm. And I truly believe that we're in those last days. But, but I'm reminded that a day with the Lord is like a thousand, yeah. you see what I'm saying, years. So... I believe we're in those last days because if you look around, many believers have gone back to doing what they were doing. Mm -hmm. Many believers no longer believe what they were believing. They have been swayed and convinced of other things. They really have. I mean, and I was listening to a program this morning. They said that the majority of the believers, there's only like 30% that truly believe what the Bible is saying. And these are believers. Not non-believers, but believers. They've gone to serving other gods. Do you know there's a large percentage, I forget the amount they said this morning, of believers who have converted to Islam, mm -hmm. and they were believers. And the Bible lets us know as believers, as Christians, that there's a, a doctrine that will flow across the land that will cause us to be swayed. It's a spirit of, of delusion, and it's going to cause many to fall and be carried away by the doctrine of men. So we have to stand on what God's word has said and not be swayed by anything. Amen. We have to have a conviction that when 
we say we believe what we believe, no matter what populists are saying, we have to stand on that. And like you said, sister, there is going to be some persecution for that. It really is. Because when you're believing what the Bible says, and you believe and trust in God, your faith is in a war. Mm -hmm. It's in a battle. And so we have to stand for what we know is right. Amen. Amen. So anyway, I don't know why I went down that trail, but so verse 26 so the the god of israel stirred up the the spirit of pole king of assyria that is tiglag pishla king of assyria he carried the reubenites the gadites and the half tribe of manesh into captivity he took them to hela hebor hara and the river of gozon to this day so they went into captivity after winning that great battle because they turned from God and started serving other gods. Amen. Come on, Pastor. That makes me think of America. Find out where America is in this also because America won their independence against a great country, Great Britain. And they were calling on the name of the Lord. The Lord was with them as they went through all of that war. Well, then they now we start taking in other gods. This country has allowed many other countries to come in with their own gods and their many of the Americans are now worshiping these other gods. Exactly. It's the same thing that we're seeing here. It's the same thing that's happening in America. Exactly. And, and not only that, Pastor, I, if I could just piggyback off of what you're saying, not only have they accepted other gods, but if, if you'll notice that this country was established on some principles that we're supposed to be standing on, mm -hmm. But if you look at what's filtrating through Congress, we're, you could say we're headed towards the same thing that they escaped from. Mm -hmm. There are people in Congress who wants to turn America into socialism. Mm -hmm. They really are. And socialism isn't what this nation was built upon. Adolf Hitler and them proved that. Mm -hmm. So. We have to stand and we have to keep praying for our uh, uh, political leaders. Amen. It's important that we pray for them. And the Bible tells us as believers that we are to pray for those that are in, in authority so that we can live in peace. Amen. And if we don't pray for them, you know, that we were talking the other day about uh, a young lady who's uh, in Congress who's trying to put some laws through Congress that they're very questionable, let me put it that way. They're very questionable because she's part of, I wanna say that it's a jihad. Mm -hmm. I think she's of the jihad belief or something like that. And she's trying to bring forth some, some, some laws and that no one's resisting that with her. So what she's saying, no one's resisting it. Just a, a few people are speaking about it, but if we don't stand for what we know and pray for our leaders that God will lift up believers in Congress, Amen. we're going to have some laws that we'll be following and, and believe it or not, we'll be wondering why we're going that way. Mm -hmm. I believe right now they're battling over the Roe versus Wade. Yeah, they are. Big, bills. big time. Mm -hmm. yeah. They really are. Mm -hmm. I was listening to uh, 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 gospel station this morning where they were talking about their very same thing here in texas here in texas it, it's it's is they were a bill that they were trying to pass but they overrode it here in texas and can you just imagine i mean i don't know what everyone else believes but i know that life is important mm -hmm. i know that life comes from god and I know that every person that comes into this world, God allows that person to come in because there's a purpose that God has for every person that comes into this world. And when you abort a life, now this is me talking now. When you abort a life, you are aborting a purpose and a plan of God for this world. And so I'm not, I'm not against uh, I have to be careful with what I say. 
I'm, I'm not against anyone, okay? But I just know for a fact that the, the Word of God says that life begins with God and it ends with God. And when we terminate a life, then what we're doing is we're going against the plan of God. Let me put it like that. Mm -hmm. I think our governor passed a bill that, that abortions could not be done if they could hear a heartbeat, mm -hmm. which can be done in a matter of like just a few weeks. Yeah, six weeks, I six think, weeks. is yeah. what they said. Yeah. Yes. Today they were talking, and what I saw was they were talking about it's not so much, it's more on how they do the abortion and what they do that they actually are, are taking pieces of the baby, you know, not all at once. It's, it's yes. horrible. Yes. Horrible. Yes, and so it's a good thing that the governor did that. Mm -hmm. If you think about it, mm -hmm. I mean, the reason why it's a good thing is because he would not allow it to go past because I don't know if, if most of you know that, but these Planned Parenthood places, they are non, they're, uh, they're five, not 501, they're non-profit organizations. But they do profit off of the babies. Is that something? My Lord. Yes. When they abort these these babies, they sell the parts. Yeah. It's a fact. I'm not making that up. They sell the parts. And I'm I, I just don't understand it. So when I hear someone speak up for life, I get a shout about it. Mm -hmm. I get a shout about it. Mm -hmm. So anyway, God allowed them to go into captivity, which is the last verse. And it says to us right there because they began to serve other gods. Mm -hmm. And so next week we'll go into chapter 6, the family of the Levi. So if there are no other questions, I'll turn this over to the pastor. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Terry. Awesome job again. Amen. amen. The church say amen. 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 That was an awesome, awesome lesson, y'all. And uh, as we uh, explained last week, we are going through the entire Bible. Uh, I know there's some parts of the Bible that is uh, genealogies and, and just different laws and different things like that in the book of Leviticus and Deuteronomy. And, uh, those are just some of the books that people don't really like to go into because it's just so much re repetition with the genealogies, but it's important. We are going to read every word of God because if we miss or uh, uh, decide not to read something, we can miss a blessing. There's something that God may be speaking to us and we are missing that because we don't think that it's important to go through and read it. Every word of God is important. Every word. So uh, we're going to continue to go through um, all the books of the Bible. Now, um, First Chronicles, there's a lot of genealogical readings all the way to chapter 9. So, you know, for the next three chapters, we got, it's going to be a lot of different readings of, of different genealogies. But in those readings, there are some, still some messages that God is giving us through that. Just like Pastor Terry, that was a very uh, uh, great job with the Bible study. There were some very important points that we got out of that lesson. There were a lot of different things we got out of that lesson um, that can apply today. A lot of people think that the Old Testament was just the Old Testament and stuff that just happened back then, but there are still things that we can apply to our lives today. Just like this situation that's going on with politics right now. Uh, we have to make sure we follow what God says. We can't let society dictate our uh, uh, what we're doing or what we're voting on based on what society is doing. Society is saying this. No, we must go to the Word of God. Every time we go to the voting booths, we pray to God. And we go to God's word, so we are following God's will, God's way, and uh, God's word as we're going to the voting. And, and, you know, a lot of these different things that we're voting for, uh, you don't see the full, um, I guess, the full thing of what they're, what they're running on. But these, a lot of these different uh, politicians or whoever's running for office, they'll tell you some of the good points. But you've got to look at the background, too. See what all they've done. What have they done in the past? You know, what do they believe in? You have to look at all of that when we vote. We have to do kind of like some study, re research before we go to pull that up, push that button, do some research to find out what they believe in. Amen? Amen. Well, we thank God once again for this uh, Bible study. We thank God for the visitors this year. Um, this is the way we operate with our Bible study. Everyone has a part. We have a person that's the teacher, 
Uh, it's kind of like the proctor. And that's the person that's up front. But we have everyone that God may be speaking to you to say something to the entire congregation. There are many times that uh, I'm teaching or Pastor West or Pastor Terry or whoever's teaching. We're saying things, but we may miss something and God has told you to say something and then everyone else has benefited from it. Because we missed it. So what God has placed on your heart, go ahead and tell everyone else what God has told you. Amen. And we can get more understanding, just like Sister Carolyn brought up the part about Judah and Tamar. That was very good because it took us back to see uh, why this happened. These different things are happening. Why um, uh, Reuben did what he did and what happened to Reuben uh, also with, with Judah and Tamar. Just these different things that happened in the Bible and why it happened. Amen. So we got to go through that. And we don't just study the Bible on Tuesdays. We study every day. Every opportunity you get, read God's word. Yes. And before you read God's word, always pray. Pray to the Holy Spirit to give you understanding. Because if you're just reading the Bible, just be reading the Bible, then it's just reading the Bible. It's just a story. There's no power there. You don't, there's nothing, it doesn't come alive because the Holy Spirit is not, you've not prayed to the Holy Spirit to give you understanding. So it's not alive. But when you pray to the Holy Spirit, that Bible comes alive. Yes. It, it's alive. Amen. 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 So whenever we read God's word, we continue to pray before we read God's word and we get understanding. You also talk with your, your fellow brothers and sisters also about what you're reading. I know Yolanda and Yolani, they said last week that they were talking about the very thing that we read that night. They were already talking about it. So I always try to find your brothers and sisters just to talk about it. And then you read the Bible, just like the Bereans, the Bereans in the book of Acts, they read. They read, they try to get understanding. They try to study God's word. So we go through and we study God's word. Don't just read it, but study it. Study God's word. Amen. Amen. Anybody else want to have anything else to say on that? Amen. So boy, I tell you, these, uh, Pastor Terry, you did a good job with these words still. Boy, some of these names are, ooh, boy, they really, some, some of these names are tough. And you, 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 you did it. You tackled those names. You did a great job with that. Amen. 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 That's why nobody wants to read. <laughs> Anybody else want to help me out? No hands went up. Everybody's like, you go, you're doing good, Pastor. Keep going. You know? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, this uh, next week we're going to, I think it's uh, First Chronicles chapter 7. You did all the way through 6? You did through 5? It's 5. 5. So we're going to uh, First Chronicles chapter 6 on next week. Amen. And we're finding out more about these tribes. Um, the children of Jacob, they were the tribes of Israel. Amen. So we're finding out. And why didn't Reuben have a name? Now we found out why Reuben didn't have a name. And you look at the tribes and the different allotments of land and everything else. Why didn't Reuben have his? Because of what Reuben did. Amen. 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 Well, we thank God. We thank God for all that's happened on today. Amen. And uh, Brother Lionel, once again, we want to congratulate you with the baptism. And we did have a, a certificate for you. We have it for you. And I'll uh, give it to you tonight. We had it for you Sunday. But we thank God for the baptism. Amen. Sunday? We'll give it to Sunday. Oh, okay. We'll get back to you Sunday. We had it here, but we'll have it for you Sunday. Amen. So we'll have it for you. Amen. Anybody else? Anything else? Amen. We thank God for the visitor here. I think this is my classmate. I think we went to school together. Yeah, I came out in 1980. What year did you come out? All right. We're going to tell that. All right. I'm going to jump out like But I do remember you in school, though. I remember you in school. Amen. Yep, Brother here. All right. How are you doing? Well, welcome. Welcome once again. I think you've been here before. Yeah, you came to Sunday service, uh, not maybe two Sundays ago? Yes. Yes. Amen. Well, we welcome you and thank you for coming and joining in with us. Amen. Every Tuesday night we have a hallelujah good time with our Bible study. And then also on Sundays, if you're able to make it on Sundays, we have our church service on Sundays. It starts at 9 o'clock. Amen. That's our Sunday school starts at 9 o'clock and our worship service starts about 9.45. Amen. So just come on out and join in with us. Amen. All right. Anybody else? Anything else? Did I leave out anything? All right. If everyone will stand, did everyone have an opportunity to give? No. Because you will give from me. Okay. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, yes. Yes. Thank you, Pastor Will. Amen. Um, I mentioned on Sunday that uh, we will make sure that we have our uh, invitation on Sunday night, on Tuesday nights also. So, uh, call to salvation. Thank you, Pastor Wesley, for reminding me. So, at this time, uh, the doors of the church have opened. Or if anyone wants to come and give your life to Christ, if you 
I haven't done so already. This, this is the time. Amen. Amen. So we always extend that opportunity uh, to give uh, the invitation to allow you to come and give your life to Christ. So we thank God for all of you once again. Thank you, Pastor Wesley. Amen. 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 Well, we're going to have our uh, closing at this time. There'll be nothing else. Amen. Father in heaven, I want to thank you, Father God, once again for this powerful, powerful teaching uh, from Pastor Terry and from the entire group, Father God. Thank you for uh, the Bible study. Thank you for the uh, opening up the Word of God to us. We're opening up the Word of God, but you're opening it up to us. So, Father God, thank you for opening up the Word to us and giving us understanding. Father God, may we apply this to our lives, and we, may we not be selfish with what you've given us, but take this out into this world also, Father God. We thank you, Father, and as we continue to read your Word, continue to open up your Word. As we are at our homes, Father God, opening up the Word of God, we are praying that you give us understanding of your Word. Father, for those that are joining us online, we thank you, Father God. Uh, we pray that something will say it also, uh, Father God, to give them a thirst and a hunger to, to want to worship and serve and learn even more of your Word, Father God. We just want to say thank you for all that's joined us. Father, thank you for traveling grace here. Thank you for bringing us safe and sound. Uh, Father God, as we leave this place, we never leave your sight. We'll be so careful to give your name to praise. Father, we thank you for the offering that uh, was taken up. Father, may it be used in the manner in which it was given. Yes. Father, we just want to say thank you, Father God. We thank you for the unity of this body, that we're all on one accord, Father God. We thank you, Master. Father, there are things that we're asking as a church. Father, we are being faithful, Father God, and we are trusting uh, that you would lead us in the direction, lead us in the right direction, the way that you would have us to go, Father God. We thank you, Father God. We see so much that happened in this lesson, how so many different uh, tribes or nations tried to come up against Israel, Father God, and you stood right there by them. They called on your name, and you answered. So, Father God, we're calling on your name right now, and we know that you're here, and you answer our prayer as well. So, Father, we just want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Now, may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, Rest ruled in the Bible that's now henceforth and forevermore. Let the church say, Amen. 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 You are dismissed.